Hi, in this video we are going to get acquainted with the SOLIDWORKS user interface and how to customize it to use it to our best advantage. This video is part of the Udemy course in which we are going to build the BSU Mono part by part. Now essentially this is the only video in this series which is descriptive to get you familiarized with the house rules. And I'll intentionally try to go a little bit fast so you don't really get bored in that. In every subsequent video, we will learn by building the BSE Mono and learning almost every SOLIDWORKS tool in the process. So SOLIDWORKS has a very clean interface and the ease of use has been focused in almost every corner. If you have used Katia, you will fall in love with this interface. Let's see the overall layout. The tools are located at the top, the design tree and the feature manager is on the left and the solid book resources are on the right. The center part is the graphics area which displays the geometry. Now SOLIDWORKS is a parametric design software which means the entire model is built by using features. The features are added one by one and they are arranged in a tree-like fashion in the feature manager. The full feature history is accessible in the feature manager design tree, in short, the design tree. If you go back and change any feature, the subsequent feature rebuilt on its own. You can also suppress any feature in which case it will lie dormant and affecting the part until it is unsuppressed. You can also roll back to a state which helps in understanding any complex geometry. Also, if you add any feature in the rollback state, the feature will be added to that point, which helps in adding a feature in between. Also, it contains three primary planes by default, and any feature which is added is positioned with respect to these. You can add more planes, but we will see that later. Clicking any feature shows a context-specific shortcut menu, which contains some easy access tools. Clicking the arrow on the top right brings a display pane, from where you can control the visibility of individual feature. You can hide, change appearance, add materials and textures, and change transparency from here really quickly. The feature manager also has bodies folder, which lists all the solid or surface bodies. There are folders which can be added, which we will see later on. Clicking the tab on the right hides a feature manager, but even if it is hidden, you can do plenty. Now when you click any feature in the graphics area, you can see a shortcut menu containing the most relevant tools. Now when you right click on the features, you can see even more tools. Clicking on a feature also displays the graphical parent and child relations. The parent relation shows the feature on which it is dependent and the child relation show the features which are dependent on it. It helps in complex geometries and shows what effect will changing or suppressing the feature bring. It also helps in troubleshooting the model. You can activate or deactivate it from the view menu. Also, selecting a feature from the graphics area displays the selection breadcrumbs, which makes selecting any related entity even quick. The breadcrumbs display hierarchically full history of the feature. For example, here selecting a plane displays the breadcrumbs, which tells us that this part was made using a revolve feature. The plane is part of a revolve, which is a part of a body, which in turn is part of a solid box document. Selecting a plane or any other feature displays the shortcut menu containing most relevant tools. At the top center of the graphics area, you can see the overhead view toolbar, which contains the tools to visualize the model. The first button is the zoom to fit, which displays the model fully filling up the graphics area. It helps to quickly center and utilize the screen area to its best. Next button is the zoom to selection, which quickly magnifies the selected area. Third button switches the model to the previous view, which helps if you move out of the view for some reason. The fourth button dynamically sections the model for better visualization and the inside access. Now there are a lot of options for setting up the section plane, which we can review later on. We can change normal or 3D views by using the view cube, which comes up when you hit the space bar. You can also press Ctrl plus 1 and up to 8 to change the orientation. Now let's talk about maneuvering the model. Double clicking the center mouse button brings the model to a centered isometric position. Pressing the center mouse button and dragging tilts the model. You can press Shift plus center mouse button to smoothly zoom in and out. The scroll wheel zooms the model in steps. Ctrl plus center mouse button pans the model. You can also hit the spacebar to display the view cube and select the appropriate plane to change the orientation. Now coming back to the heads of view toolbar. The display style button changes the display style of the model, but the most favorable for solid editing is the shaded with edges style. 
The I button contains the option to display different types of entities like points, planes and dimensions. Clicking on the I icon toggles between hide all entities and show all entities. Now, turning off the view of certain entities can sometimes help declutter the area. The ball icon here changes the appearance of the model, applying materials and colors. The next icon to that changes the active scene. You can set a plain white background if you want a white background image for presentations. You can also save a transparent background image by saving the model as PNG image. But be sure to check the remove background option there. The monitor icon changes some more display properties. Note that you can also add and remove the buttons from this toolbar which will be discussed in a short while. Now coming to the task pane which can be seen on the right side. Click on any icon to display that. Hit the pin button if you want to keep it that way. Some SOLIDWORKS resources can be accessed from the task pane. The SOLIDWORKS library contains a toolbox where you can access standard parts like gears, fasteners and so on. Now this really speeds up the process since you don't have to model each and every part. Now a lot more parts can be downloaded from the 3D Content Central which is an online repository of standard parts. SOLIDWORKS content here also contains some more standard parts, especially suited for routing and environment. You can add materials for appearance from the appearance tab. Simply drag and drop the material on the model feature and select the entity to add it to. Now, the status bar at the bottom displays the current process being executed. It also displays the type of document being edited and the unit system in use. You can change the units being used from the bottom right, in which case all the display dimension will be changed to that unit. Now, let's talk about the command manager. The command manager provides easy access to the most relevant commands related to sketching, solid modeling, surfacing and so on. Now, let's talk about maximizing the screen area. We can use small buttons in the command manager which adds a lot of graphics area but you can do that once you get familiar with the icons. You can even go to full screen mode to further maximize the screen area. In this case you can use shortcut menus to activate the commands and breadcrumbs to select the entities. You can display the feature manager in case it is required. To further increase the screen area we can hide the status bar from the view menu. In this mode you can use the tools menu to change units and other options. You can access the menus in this mode too by clicking the respective menu. You can also hide the already minimal toolbars too, but I'm not sure if you can manage without it, even with the shortcut toolbars and the feature manager. But for now, let's get back to the maximal layout and take it slow. Now, let's talk about customization a bit. You can customize each of the command manager and the shortcut menu and add a new one if you wish. To do so, simply go to customize button in options. In here, you can check the appropriate options as you feel comfortable. Most of them are self-explanatory. Using the toolbars tab, you can set which toolbars appear and then you can position as required. You can also customize the shortcut menus which appear when you hit the S key on the keyboard. This menu is context specific and it is different for part, assemblies, drawings and sketches. And you can customize accordingly for each. To do that, all you have to do is drop the command from the buttons area to the shortcut menu. If you check the options to activate the command search, once you hit the S key on the keyboard, you can search any command from the search bar, not just the command in the shortcut toolbar. I recommend using this functionality because it can help speed things up. You can customize the individual command manager and the toolbars by using the commands tab. You can drag and drop the commands once you locate that from the appropriate categories here. If you select a command, the description will be displayed down below for what it does. Using the menus tab, you can add or remove and even rename the commands in the menus. Now you can assign or modify the keyboard shortcuts for individual commands and macros in the keyboard tab. Now there is something called as mouse gestures in SOLIDWORKS and using it you can sort of pull the commands out of thin air. All you have to do is right click and drag. You can select up to 12 gestures and assign commands and macros to these. In any case if you need to reset all to default you can do so by clicking the button. Now let's talk about the menu and the standard toolbar. The menu bar contains the menus which contains almost all the commands in SOLIDWORKS. The standard toolbar has the most frequently used commands. Now hitting the home icon brings the welcome dialog. From here you can open the new and the most recently used documents. Using the new icon you can open the new part 
or create the drawing or assembly from the current document. You can access the most recent documents and folders or any document for that matter using the open icon. You can save the changes made in the current document or all the open document using the save button. The select icon contains a lot of options to help you select exactly what you want, which can help especially in complex assemblies. The rebuild button rebuilds the model, solving any feature which requires the rebuild. The options button contains the dialogues which define and customize the SOLIDWORKS layout. You can log into SOLIDWORKS using the button on the right and the question mark brings the help. Now let's take a brief look at the SOLIDWORKS menus. The file menu contains the commands which manage the document. You can use save as to save the document in a variety of format. You can also export an assembly along with all its components in a single click using the pack and go feature. But most of the times you can get away from using this menu by using the standard toolbar. The edit menu contains the commands to edit the document and most of which can be accessed from the standard toolbar and the design tree. The view menu contains options which affect how the model is displayed and the user interface. Most of the commands here again can be accessed from the overhead view toolbar. Now the insert menu contains most of the commands which create sketch solids and surfaces. But a lot of tools present here can be accessed through the design tree, command manager and the shortcut menus. The tools menu contains tools that control and modify the created geometry. You can control the display of the windows from the windows menu. The help menu contains the SOLIDWORKS documentation and tutorials to help you understand the software. Alright, so that's all for now in the software interface and there's a lot more when it comes to understanding the commands and tools. But we will learn it all by building the mono part by part. Now, there is a lot more information on the mind map, so be sure to check it out and print if you wish. In the subsequent videos, first we will focus on building the brake system. And don't forget to connect with us on Facebook, Twitter and YouTube. You can also support us on Patreon and share our work and revenues too. For more information, click the links in the description.